Hello, this is episode 8 of my 8 foot tall Thanos costume build. In this video I'll be giving Thanos some hands as well as making the Infinity Gauntlet. So before I get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the little notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. Now let's get cracking. Right, so starting off with these hands. And what am I using for hands? Well these are toy hands. These cost about £20, which is a total rip off for a couple of bits of foam. But they are perfect size for an 8 foot tall Thanos and they fit in the forearm really well. Only they don't stay in. So we can just glue them in, right? Well, not really. This is me putting some hot glue and a bit of foam to represent, you know, the forearm. And then I'm going to stick that to this Hulk fist. Now I've cleaned these because they've got some sort of mold release on them. And I've also sanded them a tiny little bit. But that doesn't seem to make any difference and that just pops right off. So gluing them is not going to work because we do not want these hands to just randomly fall off. So I have made these pieces and the templates for these are going to be uploaded to the Perfectly Imperfect Makers Community Facebook group. And you're probably thinking, what in the blue hell are these random looking strange pieces? Well they are going to go inside the hand. So I'm going to start by gluing these rectangular pieces together. It's important that you rough up the textured side of these foam mats, otherwise the glue doesn't like to stick to it very well. I use a rasp file to do this. You can also use really coarse sandpaper if you want to. And lots and lots and lots of glue to make sure they stick really strong. Now those rectangular pieces are stuck together. I'm going to take these weird hook shaped pieces. Now this one with only one hook goes along his little pinky finger. Just jam that in on the inside there. And one with two hooks, one, the big long one, goes in his index finger and the short curvy one goes in his thumb. And these are quite tight and that's deliberate, that's so the hand can't just slip off. Now these two rectangular pieces go along the top and along the bottom of his fingers. I'm doing these textured side facing up so that way the glue will stick better to the underside of this when I stick the other pieces in in a minute. Now these are flush with the edge of the wrist there. Now there in we're going to take this bit that we stuck together. The big long bit is going to be running down the top side of the fingers. And you push this in so it's also flush with the wrist. Loads and loads and loads of hot glue to hold those together. Just pull the layers apart ever so slightly, stick the nozzle of the hot glue gun in and just squeeze loads of glue in there. And now glue on top of all of those and we're going to stick in this other rectangular piece and that's just going to hold those together a little bit better. Now glue on those bits that are sticking out, we need to make those a bit thicker so we're going to stick these small squares onto each side of those. So one on this side, one on the other side, and you should end up with something like this. A Hulk fist with some weird fork thing sticking out of it. And you stick those prongs of that fork into the forearm. And then glue them in. Now I'm just pinning this in for now as I was only just testing it. But that stays in there really well. And of course you do exactly the same thing with the other one. So inside the forearms is a, a pipe there. I'll go into more detail on how that was stuck in in the next episode, but that's just to manipulate the forearms when it's being worn. Now onto the gauntlet. So all these file, all these templates can be found in the file section of the Perfectly Imperfect Makers Community Facebook group as well. Now these two pieces here have been heat formed into shape, and they're going to make up the main uh, body part of the forearm. I'm taking a sharpie here and I'm marking where I'm going to put some magnets to hold these two halves together. It's important that you mark exactly the same on both halves to make sure the magnets line up perfectly or they won't stick together very well. So I'm using a soldering iron now to burn a hole into the foam just as deep and just as round as the magnets I'm going to be using. The magnets I'm using are rare earth magnets, they're about 6mm in diameter and 10mm long. So 
So once you've made your holes, put a little bit of glue in the holes and then stick a magnet in, making sure that the top of the magnet is flush with the foam. Now once I've stuck all the magnets in, I put a bit of tape, just electrical tape across the top of the, uh, the whole surface there, the foam across the magnets as well, just to help keep them in. Now I'm using a really sharp knife to cut a bevel along the uh, wrist part of the forearm guard here. Now cutting it like this is going to make it very jagged, so I'm going over this with some sandpaper now to smooth that down, which is then going to make that a bit furry. So to fix that, heat it with a heat gun, and then rub it with something smooth, like your table. Right, let's make some fingers. We need to make eight of these, four for the tops of the fingers and four for the bottoms, as well as some thumbs. So I'm just marking out where the knuckle sections divide into. I'm going to cut this to the length needed. And then taking a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut a bevel in the top side of the foam on both the lengths. This will just help to round off the edges. And then to make it more finger shaped, you're going to cut the corners off of the pointy end. And now cutting about halfway down into the foam on the back end. And then slicing the top half off to make the back part about half as thick. And that's so it can tuck underneath the back of the hand. Just going to bevel the parts on the end there where I rounded off the tip of the finger. And using a really, really sharp knife where the knuckles are, I'm going to cut little V shapes in about a third to half of the way down, which should divide up the finger sections. This only needs to be done on the top half of each finger. The underside, I scored lines about a centimetre apart, but that doesn't come till later on when we dress up the fingers. And that's one finger done. All that's left to do is to neaten up that beveled edge in exactly the same way as you did the end of the forearm guard by sanding it, heating it, and then rubbing it on something smooth like the, your table. As long as your table's smooth, if not, you could use a metal ruler. Now I'm going to rough up the back of this just to help that stick later on. So once you've made four of these for the top parts of the fingers, you need to stick those together, a little bit of glue down the edge, making sure that the part that joins up with the back of the hand is lined up correctly. The back of the hand is that big piece of foam you can see there on the table. So I laid these underneath that first of all to get the position right, and now I'm going to put some glue on those little step down pieces I cut out and stick the back of the hand on. So 
So now I'm heating that, being careful not to go over the glue I've just put on it and I'm going to curve those edges round to help that wrap round the hand. A little bit of a test fit, make sure it's all cool. It needs a little bit more heat to bend those fingers. So do a very similar thing to do the bottom part of the hand as well. And I put some glue on the tip of the fingers and use some fabric to join those up. This is just a piece of cotton fabric. Any kind of natural fabric will work. If it's a synthetic plastic type fabric then it won't absorb the glue as well. And now that's stuck on there. Little test fit with the magnets again. You can see the tape over the magnets there that I was talking about earlier. That's just so the magnets don't pop out of their holes. And now all it's left to do is the thumb. So it's done in exactly the same way. Two pieces joined together with a piece of fabric there. And the reason you do that is because otherwise you've only got a very small surface to put some glue on and that's likely to just bust open. So I'm just using the fabric to reinforce all the joints. So the fingers are all stuck on the back of the arm and the thumb part is stuck on the underside where the palm is. So the cardboard parts you see here, all my templates I've made, I've pinned those into position to get the sizing and spacing right. And I'm going to unpin all of these and draw around them all on really thin craft foam. So making sure I've got a really sharp knife when I'm cutting foam this thin, otherwise it will just drag through it and tear it, especially as some of these parts are really small and fiddly. So a couple of the parts here you required to build them up in layers, like these detailed pieces here. You don't want to use too much glue, because if it seeps out, there's no way of getting it off really without tearing the foam. So now those parts are made out of foam, I've gone and pinned them all on again. And once I'm happy with the position of all of them, I can start gluing them. So that's just a case of one at a time, unpinning them, putting some glue on the back of it, and then gluing it down. Don't take them all off and start gluing them on because you might misalign some of them. So one at a time, take them off, glue them on, move on to the next one. So now the detail pieces are stuck on. I'm using some rectangular strips of foam just to go over the fingers and that will hide all of the seams. These don't wrap all of the way around and only go as if they're covering the top half of your finger. Now the width of these will be dependent on how uh, far apart you've got the finger sections and where you put those uh, the lines that break up the knuckle parts of the fingers. So you just have to measure your own fingers and make them to fit because if you do your cut slightly wider or narrower than mine then I give you some templates they might be too big or too small so this is as simple as cutting out rectangles of varying size and sticking them on don't need to heat form these because the hot glue is so hot it makes the uh, foam really soft and malleable anyway and then just going in there with a really really sharp knife to neaten up any bits that are a little bit too long and overhanging and to also carve in some details and then go over the whole thing to open up those details.
So just heat sealing the foam now. And now it's time to paint. The paint I'm using is a brand called Pebio Studio Acrylics High Viscosity. This is number 352 metallic iridescent gold. And I'm going to start off with a soft bristle brush and just splodge that on, which won't be very neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab the paint just to smooth it out. Make sure you don't put brush strokes in it, so it's important to dab. 360 view of the gauntlet just so you can see where all those details are. And the next thing to do is to weather the gauntlet. So now that's weathered up in the same way as I did in the last video a little bit of watered down black acrylic and the stones have been stuck on too, and they are just rhinestones that I got off of eBay. And that just pulls off there and then slides off the fingers. It's a bit of a tight fit but it needs to be otherwise it would look oversized and a bit stupid. And it's absolutely massive on a normal sized person as you can see. Now these slits in the back of this arm are so you can put this uh, forearm shield on if you want to in case you want to go for the non-Infinity Gauntlet look. So I put some velcro strips inside this and they just slot into those holes. You reach in from the inside and pull those through and put a bit of velcro on the inside as well. And that holds that on there just like that. So take that little bit of velcro off. Now pull straight back off again. And then to put the gauntlet back on, break it in half. I find it's easier to put the thumb piece on first. And then once you're happy that the thumb's in there, as far as it needs to be, the fingers slide in fairly simply. And then those magnets just lock together. And that's the infinity got little, little finished. And the stones I've stuck on there, not glued them on. I've used double-sided tape. Actually, it was a number plate tape, the stuff you meant to stick number plates on your cars with, because that stuff's really hard wearing. Obviously, it has to hold number plates on cars and they get washed a million times and go really fast and stuff, so that's some really strong tape. And the gauntlet still comes apart like that. So you put this over the hand to put it back together. Now, I'm not sure if you saw while I was making this about the positioning of that seam, but I've deliberately put it right in between these two strips here, these detail pieces. That's so the vertical line of the seam lines up with these, so it kind of blends it in a bit better and it's harder to see it. Likewise, with this bit here, there's a detail trim, and that's exactly where the seam is to hide the fact that you can pull this apart. So that's the Affinity Gauntlet finished. Now at the end of the last episode, I said I wasn't happy with the colour of Thanos' skin. That doesn't make me a massive racist. Instead, I went ahead and painted him purple. And he looks a lot better now. He looks more Thanos-y like he does in the movie. And I'm very happy with that. also painted his hands as well. So he looks a lot more Thanos-y. And we're now very nearly done. The next thing to do is to make all of the other pieces wearable. So that's going to involve putting lots of straps in them, some velcro, bits like that. Also making some very big stilts to go in the shoes to make me a bit taller. So that's going to be the content of the next episode. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to keep an eye out for that. Also check out the social media links in the description of this video and head over to my Patreon page to check out the exclusive rewards that you can get if you uh, are one of my patrons, including all these videos early plus some sneak peeks at future builds. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and remember, you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Bye-bye. <laughs>